the Lewy body themselves uh, are rounded, eosinophilic meaning sort of reddish um, uh, inclusions in nerve cells in particular parts of the brain. And they're composed of different substances, alpha-synuclein, neurofilaments, ubiquitin, um, that actually are important as we've learned more about the genetics of this. Um, now, alpha-synuclein, um, again, it's, it's still, we have so much to learn about this, but basically it is thought that this um, substance is a protein. Remember, the body's building blocks are composed of proteins, but it's thought that alpha-synuclein um, is a protein that's involved with underlying um, uh, uh, function in the brain such that when one nerve cell communicates with another at what we call a synapse, that it's involved with that transmission. But again, our knowledge of this is not where it needs to be. However, in both the uh, dementia with Lewy bodies and Parkinson's disease, alpha-synuclein um, essentially, instead of being um, instead of being able to dissolve um, in fluid, so being soluble, actually uh, becomes insoluble. So it doesn't dissolve; it precipitates out and forms clumps that uh, are that are comprise or, or uh, com uh, make up Lewy bodies. And it's thought that essentially these um, uh, aggregates or these collections. Um, of the protein essentially gum up nerve cells so that they're not able to, to function properly and they die off. Again, that's a very simplistic sort of uh, explanation, but I think it's more correct than not of what's going on. Now, here are some, uh, pic here's a picture on the left. Uh, again, uh, for the light, maybe this isn't showing so well, but you can see this uh, Lewy body right there, again, round, sort of reddish appearance in a nerve cell. And um, this is the same, um, uh, the, the same uh, substance or structure, but it's stained differently because the, uh, the type of stain used on that slide is for alpha-synuclein, and that's why it's staining so prominently brown, you know, telling you that uh, alpha-synuclein is in, um, in that Lewy body itself. Okay, little bit of background. I won't really go into great detail, but I just kind of wanted to ex to explain that. And maybe you know this is old hat for everybody. But if you think about the brain, obviously looking at the top of the brain here with the front there, the back there, and looking at the brain from the side with the front here, the back there, um, and then going down into the spinal cord. Think about the brain uh, being composed of two basic. Um, Sort of, uh, sort of sub or uh, cell types where the gray matter, the outer part of the brain, is where most of the nerve cells are, the neurons as we call them, and that the brain is divided up in, in such that different areas of the brain carry out different functions. So if you look at this part of the brain right there, okay, in the back of the brain, occipital cortex, actually that's the part of the brain that allows us to see. The eyes don't actually don't see anything. The eyes transmit visual information through nerves back to that part of the brain where the information is processed so that we're able to visualize things. If you look at this part of the brain right there, um, over the top, that part of the brain can, is comprised of nerve cells that are, um, you know, essentially allow voluntary movement. So um, I just kind of want to, you know, make sure that we're all on the same page, that the brain is divided like that, and that the nerve cells and the neurons are primarily in gray matter, that the nerve cells, you can think of them almost like a telephone, where you've got billions of telephones that, excuse me, are communicating with each other, as well as with other areas of the body, so to allow normal function of both a voluntary and automatic nature. The white matter is composed of connections between those nerve cells that we call axons, which essentially are like telephone wires. Now, this is a section of the brain in which we've uh, actually, so the sides of the brain are here, and it's showing you um, deep areas in the brain where you also have uh, gray matter that um, uh, are also very much involved with different functions, including movement, but I wanted to show you 
where some important structures are like the substantia nigra that you've probably read about, you know, that's involved with Parkinson's disease, where, you know, that part of the brain takes a real brunt of um, the, uh, the disease and Parkinson's disease, and that's where Lewy bodies actually were first described as uh, being found in that area. Now, the other thing, though, to keep in mind is that in Lewy body disease, these other areas of the brain where you have, again, the, the cortex, the gray matter, um, their Lewy bodies can be found there as well. Depending upon which, which of these areas of the brain are affected the most by a disease process translates into what type of symptoms that a patient develops. So that if a patient has most of their disease affecting this area, the substantia nigra deep in the brain, and other areas here in uh, what we call the basal ganglia. These areas are very much involved with voluntary movement, and if those areas uh, lose nerve cells, then a person develops Parkinsonism. However, if other areas of the brain in the cortex, um, in the outer part, again, of the brain here, if those are involved with the disease process, then the person develops problems uh, that produce dementia, so problems with uh, memory, problems with behavior, and so on. So earlier I had said that I, I believe that essentially um, garden variety Parkinson's disease and dementia with Lewy bodies are the same disease. But again, it really depends on where the disease process begins to translate into what symptoms a patient has initially. If you look at a patient with Parkinson's disease and follow them out long enough, 20, 25, 30 years after they, you know, develop their Parkinson's disease, virtually all of them will meet criteria for dementia with Lewy bodies, okay, as the disease spreads to involve more areas of the brain. Um, but there, for some reason, there are some people who may develop the disease that begins in the cortex rather than in the basal ganglia so that they develop cognitive problems earlier. Uh, why that is, uh, is, is still a mystery, but, but uh, I think that we'll be able to figure it out eventually. Now, again, um, famous sort of sections showing you that in Parkinson's disease, I was showing you the substantia nigra. Substantia nigra means black substance, and it's right here. And it's black because those nerve cells contain melanin, neuromelanin. It may, makes them dark like that. And in Parkinson's disease, as those cells die off, you have some paling of there because, you know, you have less of these cells with the melanin in them. Um, basically, it's not really that crucial to go over that. Uh, let me switch gears then and, and discuss... Um, <laughs> Parkinsonism in general. This is a really, I think there's some concepts here that are not uh, appreciated or not well understood enough by uh, primary care physicians and uh, patients uh, and families alike. So I want to spend a little bit of time going over this to make sure that we're all on the same page. Parkinsonism consists or encompasses many different disorders. Parkinson's disease, dementia with Lewy bodies, these are individual types of Parkinsonism. So I think it's, um, you know, I, I sometimes I use as a analogy, think of Parkinsonism like ice cream and think of, let's say, dementia with Lewy bodies as chocolate, so a particular flavor. But you've got all these other flavors out there. They're all ice cream, but they're a little bit different. Now, to, by definition, be considered Parkinsonism, um, a patient must demonstrate four of the, or excuse me, two, at least two of these four cardinal features. A patient may have all four, um, but if they have two of them, then by definition, they have Parkinsonism. And again, you know, it may well not be Parkinson's disease, and I, but again, it's still Parkinsonism. And I think that's, this is a concept that's not well under, or it's not appreciated uh, as well as it should be. The first cardinal feature of Parkinsonism is a tremor that involves a tremor, um, you know, is a rhythmic oscillatory movement of a body part. It, typically in Parkinson's disease, this involves um, an extremity that's at rest, so not actually being used for a certain action. The second cardinal feature of Parkinsonism is bradykinesia. 
Bradykinesia, just, uh, you know, being from the Greek, meaning 